Good morning and welcome to Remnant International Church. A little technical difficulties, but we wanted to be outdoors this morning because being outdoors just gives us the feeling of being closer to God. And when you look at the beautiful landscape that he created, we're just thankful for it and we wanted to give you a view and draw you into what he's doing. So right now we want to just thank all of those who are watching, those who consistently watch, those who might have happened onto this channel for the very first time. We welcome you at Remnant International Church. You can find out more about us at remnantinternationalchurch.com, but we're going to go ahead and go into prayer, Father. We just ask that you just pray with us against any background noise, anything going on that's, that's trying to keep the Word of God from going forth this morning. Because let me tell you something, the Word of God is going forth this morning in Jesus' name. We just decree that in the mighty name of Jesus. So Father, right now we pray even now, God, we thank you for your keeping power, for you allowing us to rise up this morning and be all that we needed to be and be in position to do what you called us to do, Father. We never want to be caught on the job sleeping, God, or slipping, Father. So we thank you that we're able to use our limbs, Father, that we have breath in our lungs, God, and that we are able to Focus and pray and lift up your holy name. It's always a joy to be able to lift up the name of the Lord. So we thank you this morning, God. We give you glory. Let's just set the atmosphere a little bit and then I'll go into prayer. Father, we thank you, God. We give you glory, Father. We praise your name. We say hallelujah to your name, Father. Lord, we say draw nigh unto us as we draw nigh unto you, Father God. Lord, turn this place into a place where you visit, where you inhabit in Jesus' name. I don't know all that might go on out here, but right now we are in position to preach the word of God. And we pray even now that you just cover us with your blood, with your glory and your presence in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Father God. We bind all malfunctioning electronics in Jesus' name. We pray even now that where the people are, that they're able to watch this broadcast without any interruptions in Jesus' name. We pray even now, God, for those who sow into the ministry, that sow into Remnant International Church, those who count it not robbery to tithe monthly or bi-weekly or even weekly into this ministry for all the exploits that God is is giving us and assigning us to do that we would be equipped and prepared both spiritually and financially in Jesus name father we just honor you today in the mighty name of Jesus we cancel any assignment that the enemy is throwing our way in Jesus name we decree that the broadcast shall go forth we decree father God that the word will come forth with ease and without interruption in Jesus name we pray Pray even now over your manservant, Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Just saturate Pastor Calvin as he pours out this word, Father, this much needed word, this word about you, God. Lord, we lift you up and we just praise you. But we thank you for the manservant saying yes to God and coming forth to do the work of the Lord. We thank, we're thank, we thankful, Father God, that our leader loves you, Father God. We're thankful, O Rabbi Shanda, that he loves your word and that he's called according to your way, God. Not his own way, but your way. We just give you glory this morning. We ask that you just flank angels on both sides of him in Jesus name to carry this word. I heard you saying this morning, Father, that this word would carry on the wind, Father. Let the wind carry this word in Jesus name and take it wherever you desire for it to go, Father. Whether people hear it in totality or whether they have just a snippet, maybe they're just grabbing a snippet of it in passing, Father. We pray even now that that snippet would be a seed that plants in their heart and goes to work to bring forth the harvest of a new soul who loves you and are called according 
to your purpose. We thank you this morning, God, and we pray right now that you would unblock the ears of the hearer, Father, so there is nothing standing in the way of them processing what is being said and applying it to their life. Lord, carry this word in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, send it where you desire for it to go. Jesus, bring to the forefront and bring to attention those who need this word, those who before the foundations of the universe, God said that they're going to hear this word, but we pray even now that they are in position, Father, and they, they hear it, process it, and receive it with gladness. We just honor you today, God. Lord, we pray even now against those who are having any kind of financial hardship, Father God. We, we pray and we break anything blocking their abundance from coming and we decree that they shall not lack, they shall not go hungry, they shall not be stuck, not able to pay their bills, but you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, the God of overflow, the God of more than enough, the God, or oh, Rabbi Shanda, that has riches in glory. We just thank you this morning for meeting the needs of everyone watching this this morning. Where there is lack, let there be deposits and seeds and account deposits from nowhere in Jesus' name. Let your signs, wonders, and miracles prevail today for all who are watching, for all who are connecting, and all who are in position to receive. We thank you today, Father God. We thank you, God. This is not about us, but it is about you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for the beauty that you create daily. We thank you for the word that you speak over our lives, that if we hold on to it, we can run and not grow weary and not faint according to what scripture says. We just thank you and we just honor you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray this prayer, release this prayer, and ask for you to receive it by faith wherever you are. Wherever you are, receive it by faith. Don't focus this morning on the worry. Don't focus this morning on the bills. Don't focus this morning on the confusion, but focus on the word of God coming forth and the prayer that says God can do anything. He can come into your situation and turn it completely around. And that's what we want him to do today. And that's what he will do today if we do our part. So this morning, I'm just going to turn this over to Pastor Calvin so we can get into the word. And I ask even now that you remove all distractions, right? Remove all distractions. Pray for your distractions to be removed and nothing to come and interrupt what God is pouring out through his manservant today. We just thank God for him. We just oh, continue to lift up the name of the Lord. And we just say, Lord, have your way this morning. Do what you want to do. Heal, deliver, and set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm praying, but I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Calvin so that he can come forth with the rich word has for you. How do I know it's risk? That's just how God is. Amen. Be blessed. <laughs> Oko no mo shete, akana na makasha tana na na makasha tana makasha tana makasha tana makasha tana na makasha tini o mo kosho na 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 makasha. Iki ne makasha tana makasha tini ni o mo kosho. Good morning, good morning. Just thank you for being a part of what we're doing and tuning in. And for this broadcast, we welcome you to Remnant International Church. Remnant International Church is here outdoors with God, where he is meeting him in his midst. We just wanted to experience him outdoors in his place. Even though that we know that God is everywhere and stuff, 
We just wanted to be with him this morning. So, Father God, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God, for your wonder-working power, Lord God. Father, we serve you and only you. We recognize no other God, Lord God. You are God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you for this time of fellowship, Lord God, and sharing your word, Lord God, and being in your midst, being here, Lord God, outdoors with you, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God, for every moment that you're blessing us with your traveling mercies everything that you brought us through lord god we just thank you and praise you this morning father i just ask in the mighty name of jesus that i decrease lord god and you lord god increase lord god that your word would be the matter that's needed lord god for those that are watching lord god including myself lord god that we can learn and grow and be closer to you lord god moved into our right position doing our father's work hearing what he's called us to do and be in the mighty name of Jesus. So we just thank you, Lord God. We just thank you, Hallelujah. Lord God, for you are God and there is no other, Lord God. We thank you this morning, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, and tell you how much we love you, Papa. Be in the midst, Lord God. Bless us and keep us, Lord God. Even as the prophet has said, Lord God, those that are watching, Lord God, whatever is needed, Lord God, on their behalf, Lord God, according to your perfect will and way, Lord God, we ask that it be released now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Those that are signed up and subscribed, those that are tithing, uh, sowing, Lord God, bless them, Lord God, for what they do for your kingdom, Lord God. We in remnant, Lord God, the prophetess and myself, thank you for each and every one of them, Lord God, and pray, Lord God, that they never be without, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God, as we start this service, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen. If you notice one thing about me when I'm preaching and stuff, I'm always referring to the first commandment. The first commandment is always resident in me and stuff. It's almost in every message that I give. So again, I'm sharing again from the first commandment. And since it's just one verse, I'm going to give it to you from different versions. In the NIV, it says, you shall have no other gods before or besides me. In the King James Version, it says, thou shall have no other gods before me. And the Amplified, it says, you shall have no other gods before me. And the message, no other gods, only me. I love the message. It just gets right to the point. It just speaks like I, I would speak, right? No other gods but me, right? And in the New Living Transa Translation, it says, you must not have any other god but me, right? Those are some of the uh, different versions that... I refer to when I'm reading my word and I'm going back because I want to understand the word. But one of the things that I have in my office is, is, is a, a plaque or whatever, and it has the Ten Commandments on it, right? And the way the first commandment reads, it says, put God first, Amen. right? Yeah. Simply put God first. And that's what the message is about today. For us to put God first with everything that the world is teaching us and everything that we wanting and seeing from others and stuff like that, sometimes we forget who we are. We are a chosen generation, right? We submitted ourselves to him we said father have your way we surrendered and even those that haven't we praying that through these messages that they would surrender that they would become the chosen the chosen meaning part of God's family and stuff and we just have to remember sometimes that we get so busy doing other things are we putting God first in the things that we do Amen. That's right. so again I just want to remind us all and stuff even myself and stuff sometimes you get it could be work and stuff it can be family, right? For some, it can be your children or grandchildren and stuff. Whatever it is, it could be your house, right? And stuff like that. Something got to be done and stuff. But we got to put God first no matter what it is. Because when we put him first, he makes a way for us, yes, right? He, he makes a way out of no way. He gives us the solutions to everything that we go through. Again, 
and he's waiting to communicate with us. That's what it's all about, establishing and keeping that relationship. If you have a relationship, somebody that you love and stuff, you don't neglect it by calling them once in a while. It's a continual conversation, that's and right. that's what God is wanting. Yes. That's what it is about keeping him first, right? When you wake up in the morning, thank you, Father, and stuff. It's not just enough just for that, right? We got to pray, man. He just blessed us and kept us throughout the evening, right? No hurt, harm, or damage befell us right waking us up man waking us up when we can work everything right taking everything for granted and stuff right arising for a new morning and asking him lord let your will be done whatever it is that you've called me to do that we searching him that we seek in his face that we're looking for the answers for the things that we want to have done that he set aside for us to do, whether it's blessing someone, whether it's sowing into them, whether it's lifting them up in prayer, whatever it is that God is calling us to do, that's how we find out, right? Those are the tasks that we need to be in prayer with. It's about just being personal, that yanamakasha, tanamakasha, tanamakasha, right? I always talk about have a little talk with Jesus. That's it right there, right? Putting, asking God to forgive us for any sin, any trespass, anything that would hinder us from having having that relationship with him so that we can hear from him. We always want to hear from him and recognize that it's him that's speaking to us, not the other one, the fallen one that tries to trick us up in things, but because of our relationship, because of being in the word, because of seeking his face, because of knowing him, we can distinguish between the two and stuff, right? Even going to bed, right? And throughout the day, I know when I'm driving and stuff like that, I'm lifting up prayers and stuff. It might be through nature neighborhoods or whatever that something's going on that a prayer might need to be lifted or I'm just speaking in tongues and stuff or just thanking God for his goodness grace and mercy wherever you get a moment I don't care you at work and stuff go in the bathroom the stall and stuff and while you in there you can have a little talk with Jesus wherever we are there's no excuse to just take time out yeah. and let him know how much we love Thank him you, so again we just have to put him first Again, when we put him first, he puts you first. So those breakthroughs that you're waiting for, put them first. Hallelujah. That healing that you're looking for, put them first. That coming out of that financial bind, put him first. Those generational ties and bonds, put him first and he'll put you first. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. You want something to happen major in your life? Put God first. I don't care what it is. The IRS, put him first and stuff. Your relationship, put him first. Wanting to be married, put God first. Get rid of the list. Just put God first. And he blesses us with our heart's desire or that special one that he set aside just for you. Like he blessed me with my special one. So we just pray that you just get this, that we just get your undivided attention and we can get into this word, right? Again, the title is Put God First, right? The book of Exodus, right? The 20th chapter, the third verse. We're talking about the first commandment, right? Putting God first, right? Putting him first. What does that mean? That your job's not more important than him, right? That your children's not more important than him, right? Your business isn't more important than him, right? Your wife or husband isn't more important to him. Nothing, your financial situation, nothing is more important than God himself. Anything that we put over him, we're sinning. We're not being in a right standing relationship. And God wants us to correct that today. So again, we call ourselves a mirror ministry too, right? Because in the teaching, we always want us to look in the mirror and see, is he talking about me? Is this something that I need to change and things so that I can be closer, so that I can be impacted and make that impact for the kingdom? Because running international church is all about making an impact for God's kingdom because he made an impact for each of us when he sent his son to the cross on our behalf. Are you making an impact for your father this morning? All you have to do is put him first. Spend a little bit of quiet time, right? With him. Have that talk with Jesus and see what it is that he wants you to do, right?
Let's get into this. God spoke all these words to Moses. Those words were the first commandments, right? The first law writing and writing the book of Exodus, right? Moses was the first law writer, right? You think about lawyers and all of that. Moses was the first law writer in the Ten Commandments. A law of God's making. A law of God's making, right? They are enjoined by an infinite, eternal majesty of heaven and earth. And where the word of the king of kings is, surely there is power. So we was just talking about that. When you put God first and stuff, it releases power, right? He talked about where the word is. It releases that power, right? And then it says, it's a law of his own speaking, right? Because he just speaks it. God speaks things and makes things happen, right? By conscience, meaning an inner feeling or voice acting as a guide of righteousness or wrongness of one's behavior. By providences, right? The protective care of God, right? By God's voice, communication between God and man, right? All which we ought carefully to attend to. But God never spoke at any time, upon any occasion, as God spoke the Ten Commandments, which therefore we ought to hear with the most earnest heed. They were not only spoken audibly, so God owned the Redeemer by a voice from heaven. The first instance of the Father speaking audibly to his Son was in the book of Matthew, right? The third chapter, the 17th verse, it says, a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy, right? He was talking about Jesus going forth and doing what he called him to do, right? Are we hearing that voice? Are we in a relationship that we can hear and know? But it said with a great deal of dreadful pomp, right? The Lord God had given to man before it was written in his heart by nature, right? But sin had so defaced that writing that it was necessary in this manner to revive the knowledge of it, relating to our Father God, communicating to his sons and daughters, right? So God is just talking about here. He sent the Ten Commandments, right, to help us to get right and be in a right standing relationship with God, right? To know how to be the sons and daughters that he created us to be here on earth. But it got corrupted. We as people corrupted it. We as people thought we knew better. We as people question God. I mean, you can ask God questions. He don't mind that. But when you come away from his word and will, and God loved us so much, he still had to send a savior on our behalf. He still had to send a savior on our behalf. And that savior is Jesus Christ. That's one of those hallelujah moments, right? Yes. Because we messed up so bad, God was ready to forget all about it. Just toss away, us away, right? He could have just spoke a word and just, there would be no people here on earth, right? But because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. This is why it's so important that we put him first, right? And not be, you know, neglectful of who he is and recognize him, right? As the one and only true and living God, right? God's our lawmaker, right? He said, I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. That was from the book of Exodus in the second chapter, right? God asserts his own authority to, the, to enact his law in general. I am the Lord who commands thee all that follows, right? So we got to listen to his commandments. We got to be about our father's business at all times, right? God proposes himself as the sole object of that religious worship, which is enjoined by the first four commandments, right? So he's talking about the first four commandments. How do we connect? How do we keep that relationship? You think about it almost from a, a relationship between a husband and wife, right? A wife and a husband, right? Or that father with the child, right? Or that mother with the child, right? This, 
these are the keys. He said it was the first four commandments of the Bible, right? And they were, thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? And again, I said that I have the commandments, right, on my wall in my office, right? And that first commandment, I said, it just says, simply put God first, right? Okay. That second commandment says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, right? Right? And we know what that is, right? These little statues and different things, right? On my wall in my office, it says, praise and worship him only. We don't worship no wooden statues. We don't worship no fat boy Buddha and stuff like that. We don't worship anything but God, right? The third one says, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor save them, right? And, it, and it's saying, again, keep God's name holy, that the only person that we bow down, the only one we recognize is our Father God, right? And that last one, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, right? And again, it says, keep the Lord's day special, right? We can't take God's name in vain. We got to know, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's why sometimes I have a problem with even comedians, you know, want to have these Christian jokes and things like that. How are you going to joke about God, right? I mean, God has a sense of humor. I already seen that and stuff like that. But we have to keep his name holy. That's in all capital letters on my plaque at the house and stuff like that. Because he's a holy God and he's not playing and stuff, right? There are they are here bound to obedience by a threefold full cord, which one would think could not easily be broken, right? Because God is the Lord Jehovah Jireh, right? Self-existent, independent, eternal, and the fountain of all life and power. Therefore, God has an uncontestable right to command us. God that gives life may give law. And therefore, God is able to bear us out in our obedience, to reward us and to punish our disobedience. Did you get that? Amen. Did you get that? Let me read that one more time. Because God is the Lord Jehovah Jireh, right? I mean, he's self-existent, self right? He's independent, right? He's eternal, right? He's the fountain of all life and power, right? Therefore, God has an incontestable right to command us. He created us. He made us. He's God, right? He shaped us with his very hands, right? And how are we thinking that we know better than him, that we can walk away from him and thinking that, oh, that was just back in the day, right? Amen. God that gives life may give Lord. He gave us life. How are we to not obey the laws of the one who's given us life, right? And therefore, God is able to bear us out in our obedience, right? Meaning any situation that we face and stuff, when we put God first and stuff, he bears us out because we've been obedient and we put him first, right? And then he says to reward it, right? To reward it because of our obedience. Now, God could have made robots and stuff, soldiers to just say, listen, do this, do this, do this. But he's giving us free will and stuff. Yeah. That's the test to see what you want to do. If you think that your life is more important than him, you need to repent right now in the name of Jesus. If you walked away from his teaching and his will and his way, you need to repent right now in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It said, God that gives life. God that gives life, there's nothing else more important than the one who's given life, right? The one who's given life also has the right to take it away and stuff, right? But he's never taken it away. He sent his son on our behalf so that we can have life. And he says, have it in abundance because of our obedience. And through the obedience, there's an, a reward. But in a reward and obedience, there's also disobedience. And that's why I'm trying to share the word again and putting him first because to punish our disobedience. 
There's punishment when we're disobedient to God. There's punishment when we think we know better. There's punishment when we put ourselves before God. There's punishment when we think other things are more important than our relationship with God. Here in Remnant, we're praying in the name of Jesus that nobody gets left behind. Amen. We don't want to see nobody that's faced that punishment. That's why we keep coming on every Sunday. That's why we keep sharing our word. That's why we keep asking people to go to the website. Look at the different um, sermons and stuff. Be blessed for any situation that you're going through. There's something in there that God will help you to bring it through. Search his word. Seek his face. Spend that little time with Jesus so that he can make it all right. Thank you, Jesus. He was there, God, a God in a covenant with them. Them is us, right? Their God by their own consent. And if they would not keep God's commandments, who would? God had laid himself under obligations to them by promise and therefore might justly lay his obligations on them by precept. That precept is a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought, right? Though that covenant of a peculiar reality is now no more, yet there is another by virtue of which all that are baptized are taken into relation to him as their God and are therefore unjust, unfaithful, and very ungrateful if they obey him not. Amen. Amen. I'm speaking about putting God first, right? I'm speaking about repenting. I'm speaking of getting another chance to getting it right, right? All we have to do is confess our sins. All we have to do is put him first. All we have to do is make God a priority so that we don't be out of order. Again, there's nothing more important than our relationship with God. We drove over an hour and a half just to get here, to be in the midst, to share this word with you. Yeah, we could have been indoors again in the air conditioning and everything, not distracted by noise and people and airplanes and stuff. But sometimes it's just right to just be out. Hopefully people around us might hear the word and might want to come and see what we're doing and hear and be blessed by that message, right? So you have to get out and do what he's called you to do, right? God had brought them out of the land of Egypt, right? Therefore they were bound in gratitude to obey God because God had done them so great a kindness, had brought them out of a grievous slavery into a glorious liberty, right? You figure that after you've been gone through that slavery and everything else, that anything that God told you to do, you would just do it with no questions asked, right? But we know what happened, right, in the Exodus when they were walking and complaining and, and asking this and doubting and stuff, right? God is, has more patience than anyone I know, right? They themselves have been eyewitnesses of the great things God had done in order to their, in order to their d deliverance and could not but have observed that very circumstance of it heightened their obligation, right? Knowing that this heightened their obligation to be in a relation with God, to be obedient, to be about their father's business, yeah. right? Yeah. They were now enjoying the blessed fruits of their deliverance and in expectation of a speedy settlement in Canaan. And could they think anything too much to do for God that they had done so much, that he had done so much for them? Nay. By redeeming them, God acquired a further right to rule them, right? Mm. Amen. They owed their service to God, to whom they owed their freedom, and whose they were purchased, right? And thus, Christ, having rescued us out of bondage of sin, is entitled to the best service we can give God. Amen. Are we giving God our best service this morning? Yesterday, did you give God your best service? Or were you all about just enjoying the weather? You know, it was Saturday, the weather was nice in most places where we were out. People were out and about, you know, doing the restaurant things. Did you 
lift up a prayer for someone? Did you seek his face in the early morning hours? Did you lift up prayers before you went to sleep? Did you just have take a little time to spend with Jesus and stuff? In the book of Luke, the first chapter, verse 74 says, it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and in power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, which is to seek and submit to the will of God in order to make a ready, in order to make ready a people perfectly prepared spiritually and morally for the Lord. That's having our bonds loosened, right? He has bound us to obey him, right? Having our bonds loosened and the things that he's done for us and his wonder-working power and submitting his son, right? In Psalms, the 116th chapter, the 16th verse says, O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have unfastened my chains, right? And that's what we want. We want to break every chain this morning. We want to break every chain, right? We want to break those generational chains. We want to break those curses on families. We want to break those things when people said that you're not going to be anything. We want to break everything that God didn't put on us, that people spoke on us. We bind them up now in the name of Jesus, and we break break them now and we lose the faith of God so that we can be the people who God called us to be in the name of Jesus and no weapon formed against us would ever prosper because of the God we serve right it's talking about the law itself right the first four ten of of the Ten Commandments, which concern our duty to God, right? Commonly called the first table. We have in these verses, it was fit that those should be the first four, the first, because man had a maker to love before he had a neighbor to love. Let me say that again. Man had a maker before he had a neighbor to love. So anything else that was there and stuff, we ought to have loved God first because Amen. he loved us, right? And still loves us in spite of the different things, in spite of us not putting him first and stuff. He's still loving us and praying that we put him first so that we don't have to go to a place that wasn't set aside for us, right? and justice and charity are acceptable acts of obedience to God. Only when they flow from the principles of piety, meaning devotion, we gotta be devoted to him, right? It cannot be expect, expected that he should be true to his brother who is false to his God. Now our duty to God is, in one word, worship him. In one word, worship him, right? That is to give God the glory due to God's name, right? That's what the prophetess was doing earlier, right? That's what we was doing when we, we pray, when we set in the atmosphere, when we telling God how much we love him. We want to worship him. We want to tell him how much we appreciate him. We want to welcome him in the atmosphere. We want to let him know that we couldn't have done anything except for his grace and his mercy. And we give him reverence because of the love. That's the worship. We just telling him when I said love, you papa and stuff like that recognizing him being god the father and everything that the heavenly father does for us is way behind beyond a natural worldly father can do the inward worship of our affections the outward worship of solemn address and attendance this is spoken of as the sum of the substance of the everlasting gospel, right? In the book of Revelations, the 14th chapter, the seventh verse, it says, and he said with a loud voice, fear God with awe and reverence and give him glory and honor and praise and worship because the hour of his judgment has come. With all your heart, worship him 
who created the heaven and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. It's talking about worshiping God because he's given us so much, right? And we take it for granted, right? We're busy doing all these different things, collecting all these material things, building up these savings and, and money piling in a way so we can count zeros and we can't even take none of that stuff with us. But the relationship that we have with our father, we can take with us and stuff. It makes us special. It has a special place for us in his kingdom. And he blesses us because of it, right? The first commandment concerns the object of our worship, Jehovah and him only, right? Again, in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, the third verse is reminding us again, thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? The Egyptians and other neighboring nations had many gods, the creatures of their own fancy, strange gods, new gods. This law was prefixed because of the transgression because of that transgression, right? And Jehovah being the God of Israel, they must entirely cleave to him and not be for any other, either of their own invention or borrow from their neighbors. This was the sin they were most in danger of. Now that the world was so overspread with polytheism, that polytheism is the belief in or worship of more than one God. And there's so many of us, right? We want to be on the fence and stuff. We want to take in all these different things because we haven't put in the work, right? To really relate and know that there's only one true and living God, right? Again, I'm asking you to put him first so that he can put you first. And that polytheism, has it blessed you? Has it saved you? Have it, has it kept you? Try putting God first and Amen. see what happens. Amen. Hallelujah. Which yet could not be rooted out effectively, but by the gospel of Christ, right? The only way we uproot is by sharing this word, by being about our father's business. The sin against this commandment, which we are most in danger of, is giving the glory and honor to any creature which are due to God only. So when we give others the glory that's due to God, right? Like, just take the weather, for instance, right? People watch the news, right? And the weatherman and say, oh, we got bright and sunny days in this. And they thank in the weatherman. That thanks should be going to God. It's not Mother Nature. It's not the weatherman. They didn't create it. All that goes to God and stuff. In any instance and stuff, all praise and glory goes to God. Only. Hallelujah. Think about it. Pride makes a God of self, right? You see people talking about pride. They celebrate Pride Week. Those people know who they are. I'm not trying to beat nobody up again. All I'm going to tell you is that in that pride, God still loves you. It's not about self. It's about God, right? Meaning it's all about you when you're into that pride phase, right? Meaning that you're figuring that you know more than the one who created you. And just think about that for a minute, right? When you're walking in that pride, when you're doing your own thing, you're saying, God, I know more than you, or you made a mistake. How can you, being a creation of the Most High, tell him that he made a mistake? That's pride. We got to move from that, right? Covetous, right? Covetous makes a God of money, right? Of greed, right? Of never getting enough, right? Of power, right? That's that thing that puts us, the people on a plat, on a, on a thing, right? And thinking that they're better than others, right? Because of a race and stuff, because a color and stuff, because of money or whatever else, right? That's covenant, right? Covetousness, right? Then let's talk about sensuality. Makes a God of the belly, right? Meaning fulfilling of our senses and stuff, right? When you experience that, those sensualities and stuff like that. And then, even though the Bible says that's supposed to be between a man and a woman, that you're figuring that, oh, God will forgive me and stuff, that he loved me so much and stuff. 
He's forgiving you if you come to him and change your ways. We call that repentance. People make mistakes and stuff like that, but he still loves you. He loves us in the midst of the things that we still do wrong and stuff because he's hoping like people like us here in Remnant, the prophetess and myself, can share a word on the many other different ministries that's following his word that you can take it in and say, listen, I made a mistake. I need to repent. I need to get this right. I don't want to be out of order and stuff. I want to do it God's way. Amen. Forgive me, Father, for, for you know, sinning. I want to get it right. I want to be in a right standing relationship with you. That's why we're sharing this morning by putting God first so that we can be in a right standing relationship Amen. with him. Think about this. Whatever is esteemed or loved, feared or served, delighted in or dependent in more than God, that we do in effect make a God of. So it says any of those things and stuff that we put before God, we make it a God. And that's not putting God first. That's being out of order, right? This prohibition includes a precept, which is the foundation of the whole law, that we take the law that we take the Lord for our God, acknowledge that God is God, accept God for ourselves, adore God with admiration and humble reverence and set our affections entirely upon God. In the last words before me, it is intimidated, right? We cannot have any other gods but God because God will certainly know it. There is none beside God but what is before God, Amen. idulterous, covet, secrecy. But shall not God search this out? I mean, how do you think that you're going to do anything and hide it from God? That's He's right. God. That's right. That's right. That is very provoking to God. It's a sin that dears God to his face, which God cannot, God will not overlook, nor secretly allow. It's considered immoral, illegal, wrong, or harmful to occur. So anything that does not line up with his will and way, anything that we think that we know better than God, God's not having that, right? He said, you daring him to his face, right? You mocking him, right? You thinking that you're better than him and he created you, right? God said he's not going to overlook that, right? He's not secretly allow it. It's considered immoral, right? Illegal and wrong and even harmful, harmful to you that you're not going to have that place in his kingdom, that you miss out on the relationship, that you miss out on the blessings. Psalms, the 44th chapter, verse 20 and 21, it says, if we have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a strange God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of our heart. And again, it's about putting God first and God will put you first. Amen. It's all about him just recognizing us, right? He's not saying that we have to be perfect. He knows that we're going to mess up and stuff. But again, he's giving us chance after chance after chance to get it right and stuff. And we're praying that that which we share, the prophetess and myself, has given you something today to get it right. That we may have been out of order and stuff, but now today, after hearing this word, after going and seeking his face, after opening up in his book, after working to have a relationship with him, that we can put God first. And when we put him first, he puts us first. I pray that this word blessed you and kept you this morning. I pray that there was something that we shared that would help you in the days ahead. I pray that it would give you some thought that you would want to be in a right standing relationship with God so that he can bless you beyond your heart's desire. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this time out here, Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, where we can lift up your name in praise and worship, Lord God, where we can share your word with your people, Lord God, so they can see the beauty, Lord God, of your nature, of the things that you created, knowing that nobody else can create this. This doesn't come from an explosion. The explosion, as I keep saying and stuff, blows things up. It destroys things. But when you speak a thing, it's a good thing, Lord God. 
you create, Lord God. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that people would put you first, Lord God, that they would recognize, Lord God, that you are God, Lord God, not a joke, Lord God, not something from the past, Lord God, not something for other folks, Lord God, but something for each of us to embrace so that we can have a chance to be in your kingdom. We just praise you and bless you this morning. God bless you.